So how'd you get started in recording? Oh, God. How did I get started in music? I wanted a band, you know? <laughs> Nobody seemed interested in recording our songs. I threw the boom box into the corner and moved it around and figured it out. And next thing I know, four track, eight track, 16 track, 24 track, <laughs> recording studios, you know, just making demos. And then people go, hey, who did your demo? And be like, I did. Well, can you do our demo? And those turned into records, you know? Definitely when I hit town, I had my racks and my Pro Tools rig and I, I, you know, I was pretty much like, why would I build a studio in a town with thousands of great studios? And then uh, the reality set in working on indie rock records. I'd work on a major label record. Every one major label record I'd work on, I'd have like four or five indie re records. And before I knew it, I was spending all my money on, on rooms that weren't even kind of like at my budget range at the time. So I was like, honey, we're building the studio. <laughs> So Gold Diggers is a music, we like to say campus, that consists of an 11-room hotel, nine studios, and a club. It was originally Ed Wood's soundstage. Uh, and then after that, it became um, a rehearsal place. So legend has it, Doors, Hendrix did some of their last rehearsals here. This band called Hollywood Rose started here. That name sucked. They turned it into uh, Guns N' Roses. So, you know, it's, it has a music history right up till we, we bought it. You know, the idea of having a destination studio isn't new, but having a destination studio with, with the number of rooms we have here and the fact that we can create a scene with it. Um, and just, you know, like you guys stayed here last night and you, know, you got to hang out in the bar, kind of feel like the energy that's going on and to be part of a community is always really cool. So when we put together Gold Diggers, we wanted to make sure the gear we had here is what we would consider the greatest hits. The, the old standards and the modern classics. We made sure uh, we had some 1073s, like the EQs, like greatest hits of EQs, the Trident, SSL, API. Going from room to room, we always will have like a classic vocal chain. And I think going with the UA converters is, it was really important. And it seems like that's what people are using right now. A lot of times people, especially younger, Folks, like they're using UA plugins and they can say, oh, I know that, I know that. That's the real version, I'm gonna try it out. And, and, and that's part of what we're doing here is you know, offering a professional environment. When the A7Xs came out, just in a near field, like I said, like they just bl they blew away everything else. You know, I was, I've used Genelex, I've, I've gone through years, I, the, the Hanoi 6.5s were my go-to in the 90s. The A7Xs just, are in that world, but just stepped it all up, all up. Like, you know, they can go deeper, they can go higher, they're clearer, they're, the, the stereo image is really awesome. So, I mean, that's just, that's what sold me on the speakers and been a fan ever since. Recently, moved over to the A7, A7Xs, um, bought them originally from my personal mix room. Everything I, I, I need from a speaker is there. And frankly, they're priced awesome. I've shot them out with speakers that are thousands of dollars more and go to the, if, just come back to them, you know. So this is a new studio and when I, when I was like, hey, what are we gonna put, what are we gonna put in here? And I was like, we gotta get A77Xs because that's my go-to. 